Hey guys, I'm Henry Clark, founder of Africa's Art Collection. Today, I'm here with my partner, Jake, and Bryce Luan. We're very excited to have you on. Uh, Bryce is an incredible artist with a talent that I've never seen like before. Uh, he is talented specifically with acrylic on uh, canvas. And um, yeah, we just have a ton of questions and a bunch of dialogue to jump in with you today. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, thanks for uh, coming on with us today, Bryce. We're super excited about this. Just to kind of start things off, you know, I know that you've kind of had a non-traditional journey in becoming an artist. Can you tell us a little bit more about your artistic journey and kind of what initially inspired you to become an artist? Yeah, man. Uh, so basically, you know, started out uh, born in Arizona. Uh, was a hockey player growing up, so wasn't really passionate about the arts, you know, from the jump. I think this is something that kind of came into play down the line. But uh, growing up is like a athletic family, you know, uh, playing hockey out of Arizona. It wasn't really the place to do it. Uh, my brother was a football player, so he had ended up going out to Michigan to play football. And uh, then later on, me and my dad followed out there. And, yeah, just continued on the hockey journey. Um, graduated high school and ended up playing for a junior team out in Brooklyn, New York um, and ended up getting an injury there. And so I kind of was in that state of mind of like, you know, what's next? You know, I think at that age, you're kind of like most people, you know, you get out of high school and you, you go to college. It's kind of like the next step, at least for our generation. Um, so yeah, like that was the next step for me. I was going to go to college and, you know, just do that thing. And, while I was in college, I, you know, I, I started uh, going to music festivals and stuff like that and uh, really like entering into a, like a culture and a scene that I'd never really seen yet. You know, like I had been so um, in a box my whole life, my whole life. I was put in a box, you know, I was, I was the athlete. That's kind of how I was raised was, you know, you're you play sports. That's all I really kind of knew. You know what I mean? And so when I was when I entered into this like festival music and arts community, I, I was blown away and I was like. It was like a whole like eye opening, like, whoa, dude, like, what is this all about? You know, you got guys around with dreads and just like a whole different culture, you know, a bunch of people smoking weed and stuff. You're like, <laughs> oh, dude, what is this all about, dude? Like, yeah. I got to check this out. And uh, I don't know, I think there's like this internal rebel inside of me, you know, like I want to go against the back in the taco truck story right now. Back on the taco truck, sweet. Back to the taco truck. Yeah, it's a taco truck called Peace Love Tacos. And uh, basically, yeah, I volunteer originally, and then he offers me like this job, right? Like I get to go around the country and just go sell tacos, and I was making some money. Um, but during that time, uh, I came across this music festival in New Jersey, and I just remember it was the first time I'd ever seen someone painting a picture that I was like truly captivated by it. You know, I didn't know anything about painting or anything like that. I just... I saw this guy in the middle of the crowd, like all the chaos going around him. And I just saw something in it, you know, it was like the sense of peace or something like that. It was definitely like a, uh, a profound experience for me to like come across this guy making this beautiful painting in like this super chaotic environment. And I just, I saw the grounding. And from then on out, I guess I just became passionate about it. You know, I just like really wanted to explore it more. So, you know, I start looking at different artists that are in the community and and i'm seeing what people are able to create you know, with a brush with a brush and paint i'm like what is this dude like a whole realm like people are creating like these whole realms like that i feel like i saw i've seen them before and i'm like people are putting this on canvas right now like get out of here it's like some interdimensional type stuff and so dude i don't know i just became super passionate about trying to dive deep you know what i mean like deep into like the subconscious mind like the uh the worlds that live around us that we can't see because i don't know for people to produce this kind of psychedelic abstract surrealism realm it's like and to be able to capture and put it onto a canvas i was intrigued i was very intrigued and i think with the competitive nature with being in hockey and my brother being a football player and my dad was a football player there is definitely this competitive nature in me to be the best at art. And I think that's just such a funny thing to try to be the best at, you know, I think like sure. yeah, it's one of those things where I've, I've realized that I've, I've just been at a competition myself the whole time, but 
I think that really breaks down kind of like my vision though. It's like, it, it's, I have a very structured and a chaotic vision when it comes to my paintings, you know, it's like mm. kind of how I feel like I operate. Like I found originally the beauty in the chaos and then, but then there's like that competitive masculine, you know, sharp edge, like kind of, um, structure that I bring to the painting. And that's kind of like where my, my style has kind of developed over time. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, man, that's kind of like, that's kind of like the gist of when I first started like getting into the arts, you know, I've, I've been doing it for almost 10 years now. You know, I started when I was 21, I'm 29 now. And it's just been an absolute journey. You know, it's like, I've always had toxic relationships and I think this is probably my most toxic relationship is with art. So, well, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> Do you, was it a, do you feel like it was a progressive talent or do you think that like it was, or did you feel like it was something when you jumped into it, it just naturally happened? Because when I look at your artwork, it looks like you've spent your entire life almost perfecting this. So I like, I mean, obviously there has to be some sort of progression or did you just jump into this work and you saw yourself being able to like create like this? I mean... I don't think you can see it until maybe other people see it. You know what I mean? Because I, I look at my art and I'm always seeing the things that can be worked on. Um, but no, to answer your question, man, like I am a firm believer in hard work. You know, like I, I think humans are capable of so much. I mean, whether we believe that a man got on the moon or not, you know, there's airplanes, people are flying. You know, I think a little bit of passion with like dedication and hard work is where like things come to fruition. Um, Cause when I first started, you know, I think, I think uh, a lot of people, especially me, like I, I look for validation sometimes. And after I was done playing hockey, it was kind of like, well, what defines me? Like, who am I? And like, what, where am I getting my validation from? You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I think, when I first started painting, I had people coming up and saying, Oh, that looks good. And that made me feel good, you know? And so it was that it was those affirmations that kind of from the outside of myself started to push me. Um, and, and then, like I said, like being surrounded around other artists there, there, there's this competitive nature inside of me that I see someone creating something really awesome. It's like, that pushes me. Like I want to create something awesome too. And so, I do believe that it's progression. You know, I didn't just start making these paintings, you know, like, like the first day, you know, it's, it's been a complete, uh, it's been progress, you know, it's, it's been a journey. Yeah, and that's, definitely. that's the whole thing with, with the art, man is, and especially in life too. It's just like it, the whole beauty of everything when it comes to creation or if it comes to just your life, it's, it's not about the product. It's about the journey you take on. Yeah. That, that's where you find that beauty. And, that's why it's fun. You know, you get to, you know, I have a couple of paintings that I've worked on for a few years and just imagine all the times that you've had during those three years, how much you've changed as a person within a day, let alone a month, let alone a year, you know, there's so much evolution in yourself. And then to be able to kind of, um, put that onto a canvas throughout that time too. It's, it's, it's really a journey, man. And that's, that's where, you know, I think a lot of us, we find, we find struggle because we want it to be perfect or for myself speaking, like I need things to be perfect, but really I find the most beauty in, in, in the progression and the journey of the, of the actual creation. Yeah. Do you find that you have different, you see the different stages of life of where you were reflected into the paintings that have taken you a long time? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, man. I, I really do like, I, I know I can look at some paintings and look back at them and be like, man, I know exactly how I felt <laughs> when I painted that. Right. I yeah. remember the experiences that I had through that canvas. Like I've had canvases sure. here. I have some canvases that I've brought to Germany and I've painted on in Germany. And then I've also brought them back to the States. Like this canvas has been like a time lapse of like many years, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's cool to reflect on them. It's, it's definitely a time capsule. You know what I mean? But do you, I, that's awesome. Do you see the emotion of the painting change, like the meaning of it at all because of that? Yeah, definitely. Like it definitely, sometimes the painting a lot, a lot of times, majority of the time, I don't have like meaning behind a painting until it kind of 
reveals itself to me, you know, okay. like through the painting, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to, it'll like start to reveal more of it to me. And I'll be able to be like, Oh, like that's where like I come up with a name or something like that. I'll be like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's over time. Like it starts to reveal itself and that's where I'll like have bring meaning to it. You know, it's, and a lot of the meaning comes up like where I'm at during that time of my life, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. it's funny. You can look back on some of these things sometimes and be like, and the whole meaning can completely change because of where to I'm you. At. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you think that the way the art interacts with people changes based on where you were when, while painting that in your, your place, your, your state of mind? I'm totally sure. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, it's really cool to be able to share your art and then to be around your art when you're sharing it. I don't know. Like people like the art is in the eye of the beholder, like whoever's seeing it, it's like, they see something maybe completely different than I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's it, art is such a cool thing, man. And so at the end of the day, it's just like this, it, like this universal language, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's like everybody, it's like a universal language in an emotional way. Like you can connect with something on it emotionally. You know what I mean? It's not so much the visual visual representation of it, but also just the feeling of it, you know? It's like there, yeah. there doesn't have to be words. It's just like, this is it. And then someone, you know, like whether it's people are crying or people are laughing at it, or, you know, it's just, it's sure. such a cool thing, man. It's such a cool thing. Yeah, totally. Totally. You know, something that in your bio, it talks about how, you see art as meditation and kind of use art as meditation. And, you know, I see that across so many fields, like whether it's an athlete or like lifting, working out people like use that as their meditation or like a lot of people use music and art as their forms of meditation. You know, what's that process like for you? You know, how do you see meditation kind of come into play with art? Sure. I mean, meditation in general for me is, is, is trying to find the ability to be present. And so when I have the brush in my hand is a lot of times is when I feel most present, you know, and, and sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes a little while, you know, like the first, um, you know, 20 minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, you resist, you can like resist that meditation, you know, even if you were like kind of closed eyes meditation, you kind of start getting restless, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard yeah. there, like with your eyes closed. It's kind of the same thing with painting. You know, it's like first like five minutes, you're just kind of like not there. And then 10 minutes go by. And then after 30 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how often you've been practicing, you know, it's, it turns into like, um, it's all just like happening and you're just kind of observing it happen. And that's kind of how I, even with closed eyes meditation, it, it's kind of the same thing. You know, you have all these thoughts going on throughout the day, just like thousands and thousands of thoughts. And you learn to like observe those thoughts and with like closed eyes meditation and mm -hmm. with painting, it's kind of the same thing. You know, it's like you become the observer of what the vision is starting to like uh, reveal to you. So sometimes I'll be sitting there when I'm lost in the meditation of painting, I'll kind of just like start seeing things come to fruition or come to the surface. And it's, it's just like a kind of like a magical kind of experience, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, meditation, man, it's, um, what is that to you? Meditation. Like I said, it's, 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 um, it's trying to find the ability to find present, the present, you know, yeah. it's like, like I said, there's thousands of thoughts that go on and, and, and learning to just observe those thoughts and that you're not, that you're not those thoughts, you know, that's like, you're just a, like a conscious being like observing those things rather than. You know, there's, there's a lot of self-deprecation sometimes, you know, there's like a lot of ego throughout the days that like you have a thought on something and that, and then you make that you, you know, like you'll, you'll make that thought you and really those are just thoughts, you know, it's like a, it's like a train station in a chain, in a, in a train, you know, your thoughts are the train and then you're the station, you yeah. know, you just kind of let that train go on by, you know, just let them pass through. So, I mean, it's, it's, you don't a, have to it's engage a, with it necessarily. Exactly. And you don't yeah. have to, yeah, it's not even who you are. Like, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, you know, while you're doing one of your paintings and you're in this, I guess, meditative state, do you find it hard to like follow the vision for that art? Like, do you, hmm. does your hand just kind of take over and you just like, don't even necessarily really know what you're painting or, 
Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it starts out for me. It's, it's really, it's chaotic. I'll, I'll lay down a foundation of a gradient background. So gradient meaning just like changing from one color to the other. And then I'll literally grab colors that I just used and smear it and just kind of play with it and move it around. And then from there, I'll start to, I don't know, start to develop some type of ideas, you know what I mean? And then I'll kind of shoot for those ideas. And over time, you know, you start to break it down into like, it's almost like, like, it's like I get more detailed and detailed and detailed as I go, you know, it starts mm -hmm. out like, you don't know what you're doing to then you start like, I don't things start coming to your mind and you start kind of just like building on that, building on that. And then sometimes you're just so unsatisfied with the thing, you don't know what to do. And that's where like, I've learned to step away and probably just like start another painting, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know? or, or I'll just completely ruin it. I've done that a couple of times, you know, like I'll have a painting that's just like hours in and yeah. I have some type of mental break and I'm like, oh, it's gotta go. <laughs> yeah yeah kind of make sure that you don't have the option to keep going just gotta gotta strike it out yeah it, it becomes obsessive that's why i was saying it's it's probably the most toxic relationship i'm in is with a painting so <laughs> yeah one that's worth maybe keeping yeah one that's worth maybe keeping. <laughs> we'll yeah. see we're on we're on okay terms right now we're we're talking a little bit <laughs> <laughs> that's always good do you think that since you've you've had this experience where you're more present and in touch with your emotions and meditating in the way that you have a conscious in that state, has that changed your artwork? First off, I just want to say I'm no conscious, you know, like I have I am not like some zen out dude, you know what I mean? Sure, like, sure. I got a lot of uh I got a lot of crazy stuff going on up there and maybe that's Maybe that's what helps, you know, it's just like that daily practice of, of painting, you know, it's like, it's something I don't always want to do, but I know it's, it's good for me to do it. You know, it's just like, it's just like, if you were to compare it to like, uh, like close eyes meditation, like, dude, I don't want to sit here for 30 minutes and close my eyes, but yeah. it might be good for me. And it's like, sometimes like that with art for me, with painting, it's just like, I don't always want to sit down and do this or, you know, but like, it's probably probably a good thing if i do do that you know what i mean absolutely yeah. <laughs> i don't know if i answered your question or not but. no I, I i think you did but i mean it's one of those things where in general it's like you're gonna feel pain at some point but when you do the things you don't want to do in the moment in the long run it allows you to have more freedom definitely and by freedom it means like inner peace and in that context for you it's yeah. you know almost like tranquility and like being very proud of the work that you just created Dude, that's a great. Right? Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So. I love that definition of freedom because especially in today's society, so many people are like, I want to like have freedom from my job and like work for myself. And like, that's, it's not freedom. That's independence. So freedom is really like having no notion of any existence other than where you are right now. And like yeah, you know, yeah. your mind not being in the past or the future, which is, you know, where our minds mostly are. So I think that's the way that people need to look at freedom, not as yeah. like monetary freedom or freedom from your boss. It's like the freedom from your mind to be exactly where you are. You know, yeah, like, I couldn't agree more. It makes me think it was the word acceptance. Like acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. If I yeah. accept how I feel and accept my surroundings right here, right now, then that, that, that does sound like serenity. That does sound like freedom, you know? Yeah. The mm -hmm. ego goes away a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, the ego, the ego is a weird thing, man. I feel like sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's like, it's not, I don't know. It's, it's a weird subject, I think, in ego, you know, because yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's so mm -hmm. much part of humanity, but at the same time, it's almost like this primitive ape part of us that has remained into the modern world. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's really no place for it. You know, it's almost like pre-human. Yeah, it's uh, animalistic. It is. It is animalistic. It's not um, a reflective of the society that we all want, but some reason continue to all engage with. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to jump back to something where 
we're talking about freedom. I think what a big thing about what's so beautiful about your art and why I want people to see it and engage with it so much is because when you have in things, when you chase things in life where it's like about gratification and what you want and like you think that brings you happiness, that really a lot of the time doesn't. Mm -hmm. And when you can tap in and see something beautiful in art, that's one of the few pleasures in life where you can take kind of that element of wanting something and actually like letting it be a good part of your life rather than like, you know, like the gratification you get from when you like drink a beer or play video games, something that's just kind of unproductive or like eat Cheetos. It's just like not great for you. You know what I mean? But something with art and especially yours is really cool is that when you get to engage with it, you kind of get that gratifying feeling, but in a way that's healthy and also beautiful and like yeah. almost like raises a little bit of your internal self a little bit. Totally, man. I mean, it makes me think about honestly, like the dark times I've been through. And maybe that's like part of it too, is like being in those dark times to really need something beautiful, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. really like so low in a place to where like, man, my life is miserable and my life is sad and my life is angry, whatever it is. And then there's this painting that could maybe bring me like a, a visual representation of maybe something that's like beautiful like a reminder yeah. that life can be beautiful because I, I i do see that like I, I pain i do see that bringing beauty you know yeah totally. like that little light inside of you still is like coming out yeah. somehow it's like yeah. a reminder <laughs> yeah it's like dude yeah, yeah. yeah. A little beacon yeah Shoot yeah, yeah. <laughs> the light means so much more when it's been through darkness first and it's kind of like the whole thing with like you talking about it it's all about the journey, you know? Um, yeah. And I think we all see that, like when we do reach the destination, we're kind of like, Oh, this isn't as cool as I thought it was going to be. Like, it's like, <laughs> I almost wish I could go back to the journey, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, that's, that's everything. Um, that's where all the, what you're saying is yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, that, that reminds me of this quote I recently saw and it was like the intellectual, says something complex in a lot of words but the artist is able to say it like in no words and i thought that was so cool because it's like people try to explain things in these complex terms you know these really unexplainable things but artists are able to just show it through you know their artwork and kind of how they see well, it Bryce, that's totally what you're doing with talking about like like actually tapping into another dimension talking about it is almost so complex that it, like you can't an understanding of it or not it's hard to even put into words and somehow your a lot of your work your acrylic your acrylic on canvas captures exactly what people have so much trouble describing and have for so many centuries and in so many civilizations almost it's like it's it's really cool just to like i don't know like there's a fabric you know like of artists like there's artists have been around for a long time expressing expressing things that are out of this world you know what i mean it's just cool to try try our best to be a part of the fabric you know totally totally what do you uh can we jake can we pull up some of uh bryce's work so we can talk yeah. about specifics with him this is really cool though i, I this is a good talk yeah, I, I'm happy. With I love this. it. I love it. Sorry yeah. about that noise earlier. We'll cut this part out too. But <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah, you got a couple of paintings of you got Gemini and Grateful Pranksters. Oh man. Yeah, is dude, there a specific dude, just one? Literally, just grab something and uh, let's just unpack it. Yeah. Let's go for that one right there, Lucifer Self Destruction. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, this one. Uh... I've had some really crazy experiences with this man, like talk about ego and I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be a little vulnerable here, you know, but Please. Um, so I named it Lucifer, Lucifer self-destruction originally because if you notice on like the bottom half of the painting, there's like this, this guy sitting there and he's kind of like got the meditative hands going and it's like, He's like destructing himself, you know, like along this path. 
we're talking about pain, you know, just like self-destruction at its finest. It's just like, yeah, you know, and like, then you got the angels on the outsides of them and they're like, they're like praying for them and, and trying to remind them like, Hey man, like, you know, the path you're going on right now might not be this path. And then I'm just there self-destructing. And then like the story of Lucifer, like he like, you know, runs our earth or whatever. And he's like up there above me and he's like sending me to like the depths of hell. Right. So like, it sounds really dark, but then this could also have completely un different meaning as well. You know, it could be like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's Absolutely. all give on, you know, during the creation. Cause I know during this creation, I was in a very dark place. Um, you know, this could also be like the path, you know, like I, like I'm on the path and like the all creator, the, you know, the spirit, God, whatever you want to call it is basically just like your path is laid in stone. Like what has happened has already happened kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in the background, there's like the pyramids, which I think like resemble like a sense of stability and like strength. And then during this time I was in California. Uh, and that's what originally I didn't have those kind of trees in the background there, like those big trees, but those, those were resembling the, my redwood experience yeah. I think, uh, during that, during that time. And then there's that beam that's coming down and that's just like some, I don't know. It just makes me think of like a heavenly beam, you know? Cause like when I, when I think of like life itself, I, I do see there being like the yin and the yang, the, the devil and God, there's always something working, you know what I mean? Like that's, mm -hmm then there's good and there's bad there's always these things and i think both these things like exist in us and in in this painting i think it's it's always perspective you know it's like you know if if the 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 way you look at it whether you're the artist or not you know you could see the light in it or you could see the dark in it you know it's kind of like whatever you kind of choose to perceive yeah um, in the place i'm in right now when i look at it i'm i'm looking at it from a pretty positive point of view you know, there's Absolutely. these, there's these angels and there's these people, you know, like you guys could be the angels right now who are supporting this journey of this, this person that's going down this path. His path is set in stone. He might not know the future, but he has faith in the future that uh -huh. where he is headed is, is in control of like the all powerful, the creator, you know, and he's like trusting that process. And there's like those, those lines of like energy that are all connecting there's these angels and these different worlds around us that are supporting this person through this process. And mm -hmm. I know in my journey right now, like I know there's a lot of that going on that, you know, there's a lot of specific individuals right now who are continuing to support, support me, you know? And, and um, I don't know, I really hope to evoke like, like heavenly and hell type of uh, feelings through my art, you know, that's, sure. I really want to provoke those thoughts of like, there's more to this than just what we see to the eye. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's the, no what is your notion around like experiencing hell on earth while you live and vice versa? Oh man. Well, cause the, <laughs> like when you were talking about a lot of this, that's where my mind went. Like almost like Lucifer is pushing you into like a very dark place. So you know that, you don't want to be there and where you want to go. And you yeah. have all of these like entities supporting you. Am I, am I following along or is totally. that just kind of where my brain took me? No, I mean the way I see like Lucifer or, you know, the darker energy, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's very manipulative and it's very delusional. Like mm -hmm. you think that things might be good but really they're, they're, they're not, and you're not really fully able to see it. You kind of get almost like possessed in a way to where yeah. you're acting and being a certain way that that's really, you know, you think you might like self-righteousness or something like that. Like you might be self-righteous or something like that and think that, you know, all, and there's like no humility involved and you're like, you know, get that God complex kind of thing like that. That's kind of like, I see that as being a part of like, the darker side trying to manipulate you know where you think you know all where um i feel like humility 
um, and like honesty and, and, and stuff like that. Those are things that are more on like the light side, you know, the, the, the God side or whatever. And, um, I don't know, dude, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to put into words, you know, cause it's like, we're reaching deep levels with words right now of like heaven and hell. And, and, and that's why it's like, it's, it's easier for me to kind of put it on the canvas and, and get that representation uh, on the canvas. I've also heard that this painting looks like kind of like a lotus flower too. Like those to me are mountain, but someone's also said that to me that like, it looks like a lotus flower that's like opening yeah. up. There's like this guy that's sitting in the middle of it. You know, there's, there's so many different perspectives on, on paintings and, and art and stuff like that. But yeah, this one for me, I think is one of my, one of my most powerful pieces that I've, that I feel within myself um, in this painting you know? yeah yeah <laughs> that was a lot that yeah no that's super <laughs> deep that's awesome yeah. um, it is, i love that it's, it's crazy <laughs> I know, in a good it's, way in a great way yeah, yeah. I've, you know I've, a lot of go ahead Jake, you know, for, so. oh sorry um you know just a lot of your pieces have this spiritual undertone of you know heaven and hell on these angels and this positive and negative energy I'm just kind of curious to hear your take on religion and spirituality. Um, Cause you make these pieces that are so powerful in that regard. Yeah, dude. I mean, I really hate that religion in general has caused so much war and it's sad. Um, you know, the way I see things is like, I, I believe in like Christ conscious, but I also believe in like, you know, Buddhism. And I also believe in like Hinduism and like, all these different teachings. And, and that's what, how I see it is like, man, there's been so many people who have come to existence in this reality. Like sure. Jesus could be one of them. Buddha could be one of them. And all they are are trying to teach us good morals and how to be like a good human being. And because of that, like religion puts everything in a box and it separates people, you know, and spirituality, I think, is being connected to the source of the creation of itself. You know, um, yeah, it's it's a sad thing. I think what religion has done to our people um, and and the opinions that people have. And I think I was talking about this the other day, dude. Like, I feel like you know, at times I've been opinionated, but these days I don't find myself having this huge opinion on things, and I feel like that's what's causing like this complete like hatred and war and, and just mass murders and stuff like that. Like what's going on in, in Israel right now. It's just like, I'm, I'm not, like, I'm not like political by any means, but it's just like, this is based off what people believe in and like humans are killing humans because like they think that this is wrong or this is right. It's like, all I know is my God, you know, he doesn't discriminate, you know, or she doesn't discriminate, you know, like, my God's the homie. My God's like, yo, like y'all need to just vibe out. Yeah. Make it easy. You know, like I sent Buddha down there to like teach you guys this thing. And I sent Jesus to teach you guys here this thing. And then like, yeah, Zoom, God's like, has like millions of gods, which is really cool. Cause how many different interactions do you have throughout the day? With you know? different versions of that higher power. Yeah. And so it's like all this stuff like makes sense to me. So yeah. how am I supposed to deny myself? you know, deny myself this opportunity to learn more, you know, yeah. it's like to just follow like one thing, um, which I know like in Christianity, like that is the way. And so like to, to some Christians, I, I'm, I'm not on that path and that's okay though. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's all how you perceive the world and it's all perspective at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. Oh man, it's a crazy world we live in. And like, there's too many, there's too many experiences like synchronicity, deja vu, you know, it's like, there's, there's something going on out here. <laughs> there's, there's definitely something going on more than what the eye can see, you know? Yeah. At least the way I see it. Totally. So I'm just like yeah. unpacking all that. I know. <laughs> uh, deep, deep stuff kind, here, boys. Deep stuff. That was deep. That was deep. <laughs> kind of with, you know, you just brought up like deja vu and these synchronicities. And it's, um, you know, where do you draw the inspiration from in your art? Because I know kind of reading about you, you're trying to like bring to life 
different realms and, you know, different versions of reality. So kind of where do you get that inspiration? Man, just life experience, just experiencing like crazy stuff, experiencing pain on deep levels and experiencing joy, like, you know, just trying to reflect like what's going on inside of me and time. There's definitely like a passion inside of me, you know, that makes me want to create and it makes me want to create something special. And like with my belief in my higher power, that's like one of them, that's one of the things that like my higher power wants me to do. Is he wants me to create. So like that's that's a part of my mission. You know, it's like a part of my mission is to like create. And so when I'm not creating, sometimes I can be hard on myself, you know what I mean? Like I'm not creating right now. I'm not doing what I should be doing. You know, but there's we live in a reality where you gotta do things like work yeah. a normal job. You know, work a normal job, you gotta make money, you gotta pay bills, stuff like that. So, you know, just get it in where it fits in, you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. you know, I wish, yeah. you know, my 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 goal is to one day be able to just pick up a brush in the morning to work. And that that would be it, but that's not the world I'm living in. Yeah. 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 So, that's I what love I really that. Do with uh what you're saying about you know being hard on yourself when you're not doing what you know you should be doing and it's like i think everyone with ambition in life experiences this where it's like you know what it's felt like to create these beautiful pieces of art and it's like when you're not doing it you're like what am i doing right now like i'm what so much better what am than I this doing in life? what's and your purpose like, you know yeah, when what... yeah you know um you feel like you're wasting your talent, and your potential when you're not doing the things you've seen yourself do and things that going down a path of, you know, what, you know, will bring you what you think is success. Um, yeah. And I think that needs to be acknowledged, you know, it's just, maybe that's not even a bad thing to be hard on yourself like that, because it's like, you do need to have that inner pain and like experience that pain too have your happiness to, you know, get to where you want to be. Yeah. That's I think what I know. brings growth. Go ahead. Sorry, Henry. No, no, please. I was just saying that's kind of what growth is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like I was thinking of like an internal drive too. You know, like everybody has to have a sense of an internal, internal drive, you know, but there's balances to that, you know, like I'm one of those people, I'm either at a 10 or I'm at a one, you know, I'm either yeah. the saddest guy around or I'm the happiest guy, most like extroverted person there is. But there's that middle ground to where it's there, but it's not too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, got a question for you just kind of on growing up in Arizona and the themes in your art. I know you're kind of inspired by Native American artwork. And just like Native American culture in your art, can you kind of touch a little bit on that? For sure. I mean, really, it's just like a lot of the patterns that I've developed, like my favorite little pattern. It's like kind of like that cross kind of pattern. Um, through some psychedelic experiences, I've <laughs> been able to tap into that. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I remember for a while, I would close my eyes and I would meditate and I would see that pattern. I would literally see that pattern it would be like a vibrational pattern of it and i don't know i just kept practicing and practicing to try to like be able to produce that pattern like i don't know how many times i've, I've drawn or painted that thing but probably like millions of times at this point so now it's kind of come just like second nature you know like i don't know be growing up in the southwest there's a lot of that out there there's a lot of you know native american type art that's all around so I think seeing mm -hmm. that was like a seed that was probably planted when I was a kid because when I was in Arizona, I wasn't making art, but there's something about that, the Native American symbolisms that they have is just, it's very appealing. And like I said, like through some psychedelic experiences I've had, I've literally seen these patterns. So like there's patterns that you see like all over, you know, you'll see them on buildings and just, you know, like those patterns you'll see and you'll be like, oh, I've seen that before. But yeah. these patterns, these patterns have been around from like the very beginning, you know, and it's kind of crazy that like, it's just this universal language. Like there's like this deep, in, in my perspective, there's like this 
rooted language that's going on in our universe. You know, you'll see like ancient symbols all over and like, ah, man, I don't know how to put it into words exactly, but there's, yeah, there's just symbols and patterns that you see all over the world that are like, oh man, I've seen that before. It's like, yeah, because yeah. it's been around for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. And it's like those people hundreds of years were able to tap into that. And it's just kind of like wild. Man. You know, yeah. people can see a pattern and be like, oh, I've seen that before. It's like, mm-hmm. I feel that too. Like I have seen that pattern too. Like I feel it too. Yeah. Like, it's kind of just like a universal language. And I feel like that was like, that was the pattern I resonated with most. And, just wanted to make it you know and like i i think every human wants to make their their make it theirs but when it comes to art like it's kind of it's tough to say like anything is like original you know what i mean because like everything derives from something like you see like graffiti artists and stuff like that like oh you're you're taking my style or whatever it's like dude somebody before you made something like that and then you you know what i'm saying so it's just like yeah. there's caveman that were doing these patterns before me and my jock in the caveman you know what i mean but <laughs> i think how, i think it's funny how people just try to take ownership of their art and really it's you know it belongs to humanity it belongs to humanity it's a great way to put it yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're expressing what people can visualize in another dimension or can like feel just like with all the other artists, you're just capable of doing it. You know, I think everybody's capable of doing it, dude. It's all, you about, think so? I, I, I think so. Cause I, I didn't think I had a lick of art in my body until I was 21 until I was like intrigued. And then yeah. I became passionate just like you guys are building this company right now. Like, yeah, it's growing because you guys are passionate about it and you guys are giving it the time. Yeah. And with that, like, you know, doing these podcasts, like you guys are becoming better at doing podcasts. Like it becomes more of like a natural thing. It's like, that's the progression. Absolutely. I think that back to your, your painting of Lucifer's destruction, you know, you're talking about like a lot of what you're trying to display was like, you're on a path and you don't know what that path is though. Yeah, I do think that some people innately have different paths set forth for them. Yeah. Do you think so? Man, I mean, this I've... is just personal opinion. No, for sure. I mean, there's I, I like, like I... doesn't passion drive what then you do and you're good at? Yeah, but I also also sometimes I don't think what I think is is always best for me, you know what I mean? Like sure. I, in my idea like like God, the creator, whatever you want to call it, he knows what's right for me. I don't know it's right for me. And like, he, he already knows what's going to happen. Yeah. And like, as long as I can do like the next right thing in front of me, then like, yeah. you know, that, that's what I want my path to be. Cause at the end of the day, through the lessons I've learned and stuff like that so far is like, I just want to be like, yeah, I make art, but that's not like who I want to be. Who I want to be yeah. is like, a, is like a good person, an approachable person, a genuine person. So when you can yeah. talk to someone you can cry with, someone you can laugh with, you know, just a genuine person. That's like, yeah. I strive to be today, you know, like a lot of times before I would want, like, you know, I, I need something to define me. I need to be validated. I need this uh, job. I need this car. I need this. I need that. When now I look at life and it's just like, well, in life, if I could just be like a good dude and a genuine person, like that's, that's what I want to be. You know, I don't. So that's know. what makes you feel good. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things make me feel good, <laughs> but but in a, like a yeah. In, yeah in an energy that's real, yeah, and sustainable, and, and, and sustainable. That's right. Yeah. I think that um, I think that's a big problem that a lot of people won't ever really figure out is that, you know, the chase of the things that they think will make them happy but um i almost do think that for better or worse you do have to go through those dark times in your life some people never make it out of them to get onto the other side and become what you are you know because like you wouldn't you wouldn't be saying what you're saying to us right now if you hadn't gone through all the if your journey didn't take you to where you are now you know 
it's almost like a part of the journey. It's like it's like um, you get what I'm saying. Definitely, man. But I, I will say I'm probably gonna get stuck in some traffic later and lose my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's just practice. That's normal. It's almost yeah. just like a test. You know? Yeah, totally. It's in ten years from now, you'll probably be in traffic and like you might not freak out as much. You still Dude, might, though, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you keep doing the same things until you finally learn your lesson, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was stuck in traffic yesterday, dude. You got, you know, I didn't yell at anybody or I didn't flip anybody off, but like I could just, you know, I, I thought, I like, yeah, I was, I was feeling it, dude. And then like, sure enough, I'm like tripping over curbs. I went to make some macaroni earlier and dump the whole box before I like put it, you know, just like things like that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, stub your toe, dude. But then just like learning to be like, you know what, dude? Sometimes in life you stub your toe, dude. And I just gotta like learn to like deal with that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um some guy I like listened to a lot was kind of putting it in terms of like the Rocky movie, and he's like in the movie, like the Rocky cutscenes like 30 seconds. Like he like runs up the walls, he like punches some beef, and then he like is like the best. And he's like in life, like the Rocky cuts on cutscene is life like the rocky cut seems like five years 10 years you know and like we think that these hardships in our life should be like okay i'm just gonna like grind for like a couple months and then like it's gonna be all right but yeah. you know we don't think of it in terms of like maybe that is just a part of life and like that is going to be what half of your life is and you should enjoy that part of your life you know definitely man like we we have to like make mistakes right in order mm-hmm. to grow like you got to take chances. You got to take risks. <laughs> that's a part of it. You yeah. Know, like nobody's, you know, like if I just looked at a white canvas and I never took the risk to see what I could do, then how would I ever find out? You know, I like that. It's, you know, it's like there's some times where I'll get up to a point with a painting where it's like, oh, this looks pretty good, right? And then there's like another level that could be pushed. But am I willing to risk to let go? of that visual I already have. Like, am I, can I let go of this to maybe achieve something more than, or uh, dive deeper? You know, it's like, there's always an opportunity to go deeper into something. Yeah, so, with the whatever it is. But a lot of it comes from like attachment and like fear. Like, that's why we're not able to continue to progress is because we're, we're scared. Or, yeah. you know, yeah. you know it's, it's wild, man. Like, and somebody, somebody said a metaphor to me one time was like, it was like, fear is like a wall. That's like a, a giant brick wall. That's like five miles long and like 200 feet high. But then you realize that that wall is paper thin and you can just like walk right through it. You know, hmm. it's like fear is almost like a delusion. It's just yeah. Like, like danger is real. Fear is what's yeah. made up. Yeah. No, definitely trust your, Trust that intuition for sure. <laughs> yeah. If you see a tiger, dude, definitely run. Like, <laughs> get out of there, dude. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> totally. Um, well, this has been awesome. You know, yeah, thanks, so much buddy. good this stuff in here. Yeah, this is so um, much more than I could even imagine. Man, like I love yeah. it. I love, I love the talks that we're coming up with, and the the directions we're going with it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I knew this um, was going to be a good conversation. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, for all you, all you guys listening, check out Bryce's work. Uh, it's, you know, on social media, on our website, he's got some really great stuff. Um, and I actually wanted to leave you guys with, so you just kind of reminded me of this, but when I was reading your bio, I loved what your bio says. And you say, um, if art is life, then this world is my canvas, taking all this color to repair earth's damages created to create. Um, that's, I think that's beautiful. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah. I want to leave you guys with Thanks, this. Uh, yeah. Hey, thank you, Henry. And thank you, Jake, dude. You guys have been super cool for having me a part of your guys' team. And I'm, I'm honestly honored. And I can't wait to get a hoodie, dude. Represent. Yo. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait to get you a hoodie with uh, your work on the back. It's going to be awesome. Dude, man, Lucifer. We should do Lucifer for the first 100%, one. 100%, bro. 100%. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool, man. You, like, I, uh, for me in, in my journey right now, this is like such a blessing to be a part of this. So I, I'm greatly humbled and honored to be be a part of this for sure. Bro, we're just happy to have you on and we just want people to 
appreciate your work um and we know they will so we just want your name out there and get this stuff pushed because the stuff like you feel it when you look at your work and that's that's what we're going for thank you you know you can't fake that thank you guys so much yep awesome bruce yep thanks for tuning in everyone thanks guys